welcome to the first ever Arch Advocate Podcast. I am your host, Pete Dobson. Yes, I know that the, the other banner is still up. The Crypto Currently Podcast banner is still up. Hey, man, I'm working on it. I'm new, dude. You know, got to start somewhere. Listen, it's the Arch Advocate Podcast. We advocate making sense of this crazy world. And the way that we go about that is just let's stick to the numbers, right? Let's look at it from all angles. What, how did we get to where we're at right now as a society? Particularly the most successful, the most prosperous, and the most free society ever in the history of the world. Ever. How did we get here? How did we get to the place where everybody has just gone so crazy? Where they're walking around and they don't even know like who they are. They don't even know what, what gender they are. They're, they're confused. How did, how did we get here? That's what, that's what we're going to look at here. There's, listen, there's a lot of shows, and you should listen to them all or watch them all. You need to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on right now. My show, right, this, this open discussion that we're going to be having here, this is like, let's, let, let's just try to make sense of it and keep calm and cool heads. Let's remain reasonable, and let's make sure that we document everything so that future generations don't have to ever go through this again, Right? You look back on Nazi Germany, man, it's like, listen, those people afterwards, like, they were like, listen, we need to make sure this never happens again. How do we do that? You know what I mean? You look at what they did and who, who those people are nowadays. They're like, it's against the law to even wave at somebody <laughs> in Germany, you know, inappropriately. You know, if you do the Roman salute in Germany, it's like, oh, you're going to jail. You know what I mean? Like they're they're like let's make sure this never happens again. So what is it that we need to do in this era to make sure that future generations don't have to go through this again? Well, we 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 document what what's happening right now. And we reverse engineer it and try to figure out, well, how did we get here from wherever it was that we were? Right? Now, I just got off the phone with Bad Wolf. Bad Wolf has been a longtime listener of the uh, Cryptocurrently podcast. And he's helping me out. Um, I had some technical questions for him. He's a computer engineer kind of guy. And uh, we got to talking, and, and we were talking about one of the scammers that he had uh, noticed was out there and had brought to the community and said, uh, hey, watch out for this guy, the feet of peace guy or feet peace guy, whatever. And the thing is, is like, you know, there's people out there that they make a living off of scamming other people. They see that the, the human conditions come, the condition comes with a certain allotment of vulnerabilities. And there are people out there who recognize that and decide they're going to um, make a career out of manipulating those vulnerabilities. I won't call them weaknesses because they're not, they're not always weaknesses. Listen, compassion is not a weakness, it's a strength. But compassion, just like anything else in life that's pure, you know what I mean? There is a there is a holy side to everything, and there is a profane side to everything, right? Take human sexuality, for example. There is a holy side to that, and there is a profane side. And right now, we are seeing a great deal of profanity. That 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 sexuality has uh, been practiced in the profane. At the highest levels of our government. Now, you could be sitting there saying, oh, Pete, that's all conspiracy theory. Oh, what are you, Alex Jones, watching Pizzagate? It's like, no, 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 no. Take Pizzagate completely out of it. And you still have a very big problem of, of very serious allegations being made about child trafficking by Hillary Clinton, by Barack Hussein Obama, by, the, you know, by their administration, and not only them either, but other Republicans. Right, you're seeing those accusations coming out, and it's it's it, it was in the inspector general's report. So now you're off of. Listen, you can think Alex Jones was just trying to pump up, pump up his ratings with the whole Pizzagate thing, but listen, now it's in the attorney general's report. Now what are you going to say? Not you're going to say it's nothing. That's well, you can't say that anymore. It's in a very important document. The Inspector General's report, who, by the way, uh, apparently is no fan of conservatism, Republicans, or Christians. What are you going to say now? Right? There's a holy and profane side to everything, and we're seeing now 
the profane side, the evil, the, the demonic side of human sexuality, and it's, it's going on in our government. That's a big problem, right? And there's people out there that will take the holy thing of compassion and they'll twist it and distort it and turn it into a, a, a way to pull on your heartstrings and make you a bleeding heart. Their tools are guilt and shame, weakness, right? Those are, the, you know, guilt and shame and those sorts of things, you, you know, when you're using them as a weapon against other people, then those are the weapons of weakness. And that's the hallmark of the demonic. That's what demons use because that's who demons are. They're, they're weak, right? They are merchants of weakness. Their only weapons are weakness. And their, their attributes are weakness and nonsense. And you're seeing that. And that's what, you know, Battle Wolf and I were talking about was like, look, there's just people out there that, that they see that opening and they, they, they try to exploit it. And the thing about that is, is those people are never successful. They're never, you know, you look at, uh, you know, uh, Bernie Madoff, right? Bernie Madoff with a whole bunch of money. And you think like, oh yeah, that guy was a straight up baller. You know, he was living in New York City in a penthouse. He had a chauffeur, you know what I mean? He, he had his own island, you know, all that other stuff. It's like, well, where is he now? Sitting in a prison cell, was talking about, oh, it was all their fault. You know what I mean? Talking is nonsense. Right? Because that's, again, that's what demons do. They, they speak a language of nonsense. That, that, that's, that's the language that they speak. And that's what Bernie Madoff is doing right now, is sitting in his jail cell, talking about how it was all Justin Timberlake's fault, because he was rich. And it was all Nicolas Cage's fault. Hey, those people were, those people had it come, those people deserve to get stolen from. I was doing, I was doing a humanitarian work, folks. Don't you know? And that's the thing is, and I was making the point, like, you know, in the 90s, we had a whole bunch of movies by Martin Scorsese that sort of glorified uh, mobster mentality. It's like, dude, like, those people were not strong. And those people are not free. You know what I mean? All of those people, you know, that, that lived that, that chose to live that way, they're either dead or in prison. They're not, you know, like, you remember that show about the, uh, you know, the Jersey, uh, where the Jersey Shores. Those people are not successful. Those people are not going to have a good life. When they're 70 years old, they're not going to go to some island somewhere and eat delicious food and listen to beautiful music and hang out with scholars and, and, and you know, sages. They're going to they're gonna be miserable. Because they're already miserable and that's how they're going to live their life. And, and when we're looking at, at the whole problem right now, the whole, the whole situation, we, you know, the situation, that's, that was completely unintended. But looking around at the world that we're in right now, right, I, I know that I'm not alone. Like this show isn't like me seeing a problem and addressing it. It's like, no, this is the problem that I see in me. Like I'm just looking at this whole thing. And I have to assume that you are too. You're just looking at this whole thing going, what the hell is going on? When did the, all of this happen? Right? When did this begin? Did it happen in the, the 2016 election? Like, oh, no, 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 no. You can reverse the engineer this thing pretty far back. Now, listen, if you are an atheist or somebody believes that everything that scientists tell you is correct, welcome to the show. So first, let me address how we're going to fix address this problem uh, to you, right? I want to make sure not to lose anybody, right? So you believe in science, right? Okay, science is your god, if you will. Okay, so Sir Isaac Newton, would you say that uh, an important guy, right? Well, one of Newtonian's laws, and a law is something that all scientists believe like, okay, this is not up for discussion. This is a law. Cause and effect. Isaac Newton said, okay, there's a law in this universe and it's called cause and effect. If you do something, something else is going to happen. This is a law, right? If you're, if you're an atheist, you believe in that, right? Okay, cool. So do I. I'm not an atheist. I'm a follower of Jesus, but I also believe in that. However, there were other people who said the exact same thing, only they used different words. Buddhists call it karma, right? And Christians 
namely our master Jesus Christ, called it sowing and reaping, right? Whatever it is that you plant, you're going to reap, right? Whatever you do, there's going to be, you're going to get something in return for it, right? So if you're, if you like cause and effect, if that's the language that you like, great. And if you don't, you know, if you're not an atheist, but you don't particularly care for Christianity, fine, karma, right? Do something, something else happens. But for us Christians, it's sowing and reaping. It doesn't really matter what you call it, because we're all talking about the same thing. And if, there, if, that's, if that is true, right, then what we are seeing right now in this bizarre behavior of these crazy leftists, and, you know, it's, it's certainly not only them, but it's pretty much mostly them, uh, that, that's an effect. It's not a cause. But there are other causes, so it's like we're, we're, we're in a constant state of observing people causing things and observing effect of other things that had a cause at one point or another, right? So when we see people running around, when, when we see that, that Congress lady from uh, the Miami-Dade area, you know, she's in the same area of the, she's the congresswoman of I can't remember, but she wears all the rodeo hats and she dresses like a clown. Okay, well, that's an effect. Something, some cause came along to where the people of her uh, neighborhood saw a lady dressed like a clown and said, I want that person to represent me in Congress. Yeah, how did that happen? What, what caused that? Right, what sort of a breakdown in rational thought happened. And it, it must have been a prolonged amount of time. Stuff like that doesn't happen overnight. How did a rodeo clown get into Congress? Right? When we saw Captain Caveman from Texas standing there in, in you know in the halls of Congress saying, It is with our heavy heart that I say we're going to impeach President Donald Trump. It's like, it, it, it's like you can see him, you know, you can watch the footage of that. And it's like, apparently what was going on in his mind is that he could hear like a, the, a, the thunderous applause of, of many nations or something. And it's like, dude, nobody's applauding you. You're standing there looking ridiculous because you are a ridiculous man. You are a ridiculous person and you're making yourself look ridiculous. But that, that was an effect, right? Something happened to, to, in his neighborhood and wherever he's from, from Texas. Like he ran for Congress and people voted for him, right? Like that, there, there must have been a cause. So let's, let's, let's dive into that because now we have Maxine Waters, a lady who, who does not live in the district that she represents and she lives in a $4 million home She's worth millions and millions and millions of dollars, and she's a career politician. She's getting on TV a couple of days ago and calling for outright violence against people that have a different political ideology. How did this happen? Now, that, that thing that she did there, that is a cause, right? That, it, it is also simultaneously an effect. Like, there's something that... there's a. For over, what, 30 years or 27 years, however she's been sitting in Congress, like people have allowed her to sit in Congress. So that, that's the cause. And the, the fact that she exists in the capacity that she does, that's an effect. But at the same time, like we can see her and be like, okay, well, this is, her, her being there is effect, but now she's calling out for violence. That is cause. She caused something when she stood there and said, yes, we should harass these people. That was the cause, and the effect has already begun. We've already seen people storming, like just this morning, I think it was Mitch McConnell's house, and I don't, I don't like Mitch McConnell, but I certainly don't want to see a bunch of teenagers mobbing the front, the front door of his house, where his wife lives, where his grandchildren come to play. I don't want to see that, right? That's the effect. So when... When a, a, a sitting congresswoman, who is apparently well-respected in the Democrat Party, which, uh, that's another thing, it's like, okay, that's baffling. That's, how is it that you have garnered the respect of your peers? You, you, that lady is a complete moron. 
she's a she's a, a, a caricature. You know what I mean? She's not like it's like you're not even a real person. That's not your hair wig, lady. And you, and you and you and you stand up in front of a, be, a bunch of people and incite violence. Which, by the way, I, I don't understand how she's not been arrested. That's against the law. You're not allowed to incite violence in your free speech, right? You cannot call for people to rise up in violence against other people, unless, right? Unless it's time to go to war, right? If you if you see people. That are that are behaving in such a manner that you like if it's Nazis saying we're well, we're going to kill the Jews, right? Well, then it's your responsibility to rise up and say, "Hey, everybody, we need to go go kill those people," right? Then it's your responsibility to do that, in which there's still going to be repercussions. But it's like, hey, unless you're declaring war, you can't be inciting violence on people. But if you are inciting war, then there's going to be consequences. There's going to be effect. There is going to be some reaping. There is going to be a, a reception of karma, if you will. If, if one of those terms is most comfortable for you, then great. We've got a buffet of language here for you today. So already we've seen violence, not bloodshed just yet. But you look at the cause of what happened when Maxine Waters got out there and said, hey, let's be violent to those that do not uh, line up with our political ideology. There's going to be bloodshed. That will be the effect. And that bloodshed as an effect will also be the cause of something else. And cause and effect and cause and effect and violence begets more violence. And that's how that works. That's how that works. So when we're, we're sitting around and we're watching the world go crazy, we're watching the world on fire, the United States is $20 trillion in debt. There's this new currency called cryptocurrencies, and it's, it's a land full of no regulation, no laws, and a, and a bunch of crooks. Right? There's some good people in there, but man, there's a lot of cr crime going on in that, that arena right now. There's that too. We've got North Korea. We've got the fact that there's a, there's a guy in China right now who's in charge of everything who just decided to get rid of term limits. Right, so we might be seeing a, a, a new dynasty, right? A new Chinese dynasty, because evidently we have a new emperor, right? That's a problem. That is a big effing problem. And, and there's really nowhere in the world that you can look to to say, okay, yeah, that's, that's one area of life that is completely under control. Everything seems to be out of control right now, right? And these kids, these kids that follow them. Because remember, when Maxine Waters got up there and called for violence, immediately afterward, there was hooping and hollering, cheering. Yay, we get to be violent. Woohoo! We got to get those Nazis, man. That's what those people think, right? That's what they're doing by dehumanizing everybody. They're calling everybody a Nazi. Because what do we do with Nazis? Historically, in American history, what do we do with Nazis? We kill them. We kill them. That's what we do with Nazis. And when these people, these kids, who've been so indoctrinated that it's okay for them, they believe it's okay to go around to call people Nazis who have not killed any Jews, they've not rounded anybody up, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and it's crazy. Like, those people won't stop and think it's like, well, if, if, if I'm a Nazi, right, because I'm a conservative... I will be voting for Donald Trump in 2020, right? Barring any catastrophes. I will be voting conservative across the board in, in November of this year. Those people identify me as a Nazi. And it's like, okay, well, if I'm a Nazi, right? If, if what I'm doing is the exact same thing that was happening in, in Germany in the 1930s, why is it that, that the Jews all kept trying to immigrate illegally into Germany? in the 1930s and they'll say oh well well that didn't happen they were trying to get out okay well then i guess one of your two definitions of what a nazi is is wrong right nobody's trying to escape america sweetheart people are trying to come in the very people that you keep calling victims they keep trying to pour in right 
And they're from a culture that is not has never grown accustomed to the idea of standing up for themselves or their uh, or their rights. Those are an oppressed people, and they're trying to come into our country and and establish their sort of government, where it's like we're just going to let the cartels run everything. We're just going to let our politicians get bought off, right? We're not doing that in America. We've we have done that. We've gotten, you know, we've gone a long time as Christian people. We've gone a long time of leaving our government officials unchecked, right? Because we were relatively comfortable, right? We lived in the comfort of our enormous wealth as a nation and our safety and our security. And we just let politicians run amok. That was the cause. That's how we have clowns, literal people who dress up like rodeo clowns. That's how we have clowns in Congress. It, it wasn't somebody else's fault. It was my fault, right? You say that to yourself. The reason why that crazy clown lady from Miami is a congressperson, say to yourself, man, this, this has to be my fault somehow. There must have been some work that I did not do. There must have been some sort of political engagement that I refuse to engage in, like voting, right? Did you vote? Have you been voting? I haven't, right? I'll be honest with you. I've voted twice in my life and I'm 45, right? So this is literally my fault. And if you are like me, you don't have to get on a podcast and can, you know, air out your, your dirty laundry. You know, you know what you've done. Did you, have you voted every two years? Did you vote in the primaries? Did you vote for president? Did you vote for local issues and state issues? Okay, well then, I guess it's your fault then. Is that fair? Because something happened. Something caused that lady to be in Congress, right? Something caused Maxine Waters to be able to sit there for three decades. Something, had, something caused that. And it, it must have been me. Since I've only voted twice. I'm sorry, America. It was me the whole time. And if you have a voting record that's anything similar to mine, guess what? It's your fault too, but that's okay. It's okay. We can fix this. If we work together, if we remember, right? Remember the truth. Remember the stories, right? The stories of great champions of truth and justice the champions of, of, of God's kingdom, right? Men like Martin Luther King Jr., who took such a hard stand for, the, for God's kingdom and justice, that he paid for it with his life and he changed the world, right? And it's easy to pick people up like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. You should. You should remember those stories. But there's plenty, to, there, there's plenty great Americans that you can pick from that you can look at and identify with and be like, I just need to, I, I just need to be as passionate as that person, right? And if I just do that and I get together with more people and, and, and people of like mind, we can come together and, and, and fix this problem. And, and it, I, I've got to tell you, man, there's, there's a thread of, uh, there's something constant that's going on in this. And I, I want to talk about that. Uh, just really quick, it's uh, insults. All right, insults are a funny thing. You know, a hundred years ago or so, if you called somebody a rascal, like in a derogatory mean, oh, that guy's a rascal, that was a heavy insult, right? If you called somebody a skunk, oh, don't do business with that. That guy's a skunk. That was that was something worthy of getting in a fist fight over. Insults, right? Insults are a funny thing because. You know, if, if somebody got mad at you today and called you a rascal, you'd, you'd probably start laughing. It's like, what? What? What do you mean? Right? We have much deeper insults nowadays as the uh, polite society that we are. But there's people that are going around, right? It's the same people who, who will call you a Nazi. And they'll say to, to somebody like me, they'll say like, oh, you're a white man. And they say it like it's an insult. Right? This bizarre behavior. It's like, yes, I, I, I am a white man. 
oh, you have white male privilege. It's like, uh, those are some of the things that I'm privileged with, yes. Everything I have in my life is a privilege. My life, number one, is a privilege. I had to beat four billion other spermies to the egg, and I won, right? I got to the egg. I have life. I am privileged. I was born, I drew my very first breath in the most free nation, the most wealthy nation, the most innovative nation in the history of the world. I was born there, and on top of all that, when I did draw my very first breath, it was in San Diego, California, otherwise known as America's finest city. I was born in the most beautiful place in the most beautiful country. I'm privileged. I have all kinds of privileges, right? Yes, I'm a man. I am privileged to be a man. And if I were a woman, I would say I am privileged to be that. Because no matter what state my life is in, I am grateful. I'm grateful for all that I have. And you, you want to come to me and say, you're a white man as if it's like a curse. It's like, I'm sorry, uh, Harry Potter. That curse doesn't work on me. I'm immune to that curse. Whatever that curse is that you're trying to cast, it's not working. Under There's no sequence of events that, that's going to happen where I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and be like, oh, you're disgusting. You're white. You're a man. It's like, no, these are, these are things that I'm happy about. <laughs> you know? I'm happy about these things because it's my existence and I'm happy about my existence. You can't use my existence against me as a curse, right? Now, where does this come from? Where does this, this weird, these weird insults, oh, you're a man, oh, you're privileged, oh, you're white, right? And they'll say it to black people too, right? Like uh, Coleon Noir, Thomas Sowell, right? Well, they're black. Like Thomas Sowell comes from like the hardcore, like ghetto. Uh, ben Carson, ghetto. It's where that guy comes from. And because they have ascended to the highest levels of prominence, right? What, if, what do those people say about them? Because they're black. What do they say about that? Oh, well, you're, you're a man. You're a man. You're using your male privilege. It's like, yes, they are men. Yes. And yes, that is a privilege, right? Because any form of life is a privilege, whatever it is. Well, you're a man. So they use these, they use like the painfully obvious as a way to be insulting. It's like, this is really weird. This is bizarre. Like, I feel like I'm in a different dimension. Like in this dimension, people walk up to you and say, hey, you have a nose on your face. Like, uh, yeah, I do. I do. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's like, what? I don't, I don't understand. Well, what's happening here? I don't know how I don't know how that's an insult, right? But if you if you reverse engineer it, like right, that's the effect. The effect is people are, are running around using the uh, most minimal observations as a, as a as a as a thing to use as a pejorative, which is bizarre. But reverse engineer, it. take it back just a couple of steps. You don't have to go very far, because where all that that stems from is. This insult of, of uh, or, or this, this invisible enemy called the patriarchy, right? The patriarchy. It's like, well, you know, listen, if you're new to the show, I love conspiracy theories, okay? I love them, right? I do not believe that the earth is flat, but I love the fact that there's people that do. <laughs> it's hilarious, you know? I like watching that stuff. I like other people's things. And some, you know, like you, when it comes to like the JFK assassination, like uh, most of those conspiracy theories, I believe those, you know, I love conspiracy theories. But, you know, at a certain point, you have to draw the line when people talk about like the Illuminati. It's like, well, can we just go to their office and talk to them? Oh, well, no, they don't, they don't actually have an office building. It's like, well, then who are they? Well, they're a secret organization. Well, then how do you know about it? Well, because there's all these, it's like, dude, you can't, is there a single person out there who says, yeah, I'm a, I'm a member of the Illuminati, right? Like my grandfather was a, uh, uh, 
he belonged to the Masonic Church or temple or whatever. Like he was a Mason, right? So there's people out there that are like, yeah, I'm a Mason. And they'll happily talk to you about it, right? I don't know of a single person in the world is like, yeah, I'm part of the Illuminati. Like that's, that's the church that I go to. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like an invisible enemy. And if that's not bad enough for you, it's like, there's this whole nother level of these these leftist conspiracy theorists that are like, it's the patriarchy. 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 Right? Like it's this enemy, this horrific, devastating enemy. It's like, well, why don't you just go talk to those people then? It's like, well, they don't actually exist, like per se. It's just, it's more of a concept. It's like, well then what, what then what do you want from me? Right? I'm dead. I had this I had a friend recently. A friend that I've known for 27 years, and she was telling me right before she blocked me or unfriended me or whatever, she goes, uh, she goes, I just want you to know that I'm a witch. By the way, she's single and lives with animals, but I'm a witch, and I'm telling you that before I die, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take down the patriarchy. And I was, I just responded like, oh boy, <laughs> what do you mean you're gonna take down the patriarchy? The patriarchy. Right? Have you seen this? It looks silly when people talk that way, but but hang on a second. There's something even more uh, nefarious, more demonic that's actually behind that. Do you know what the word patriarch actually means? Do you, do you, do you know what a, a patriarch is? Let me, let me pull it up for you. You guys know that I am a word snob. Let me define patriarch for you as uh, defined by Merriam-Webster. Patriarch, one of the scriptural fathers of the human race or of the Hebrew people. Abraham was a patriarch of the Israelites. Or B, a man who is a father or founder. Right? The newspaper patriarch celebrated his 90th birthday, for example. Uh, C, the oldest member or representative of a group, right? But it's implied that he would be a male because if it wasn't, it would be a matriarch, right? Now, the word uh, patriarch, there's, it has an even deeper uh, Latin meaning and it literally means the father, right? The father. And I want to talk about this uh, and I will, you will hear me coming back to this more and more and more because I have seen this as a problem. Again, cause and effect, right? Cause and effect. If you can cause something, if you're going to do something, you have to think about the effect of it before you do it because you know that by doing something, there's going to be a blowback and you need to be in control of whatever that blowback is, right? If you're, if you want to be rich, all right, well, then you need to work very hard and start businesses. You can't be afraid of failure, right? Because failure is going to be a part of your success, a big part of it, right? Or you can rob a bank, right? But let me not use bank robbery. Let me use uh, selling drugs, right? You can make a lot of money selling drugs. And you can even not have a whole lot of guilt associated with it because after all, you sell people drugs, if they become hooked on drugs, oh, I guess they were weak. You can just take their money and you can, you can make a lot of money for yourself. However, you can chart and see how long you're going to be able to maintain that, right? You can see that there's, there's, there's consequences to doing that. Those consequences are getting killed and or going to prison and or, you know, something else, All right? There's consequences. So the effect is going to, should have a big part of your uh, rationale when deciding if you're going to cause, right? Well, I'm not going to sell drugs because the effect could be this, 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 and this, and the likelihood of that effect happening to me are, are such and such numbers, right? Probably very high. Or you can go into business, right? Cause and effect. You have to think about the effect before you cause something. So looking at how we've got to such a place where patriarchy is you, patriarchy, you're white, right? Like that word patriarch has become a curse in the mouth 
of these young people. Because what that word actually means is father. That word father, it hurts those people to say that word out loud. You can see it on their faces. You can watch the video of these people saying patriarchy. Their faces squint up and their fangs come out. And the blood rushes to their head. Patriarchy, that word father, has been replaced with a curse in those people's mouths. They hate that word because they hate its meaning. Father. And over the last many decades in our land, in our country, in Christian civilization, there has been a, an attack on the Father, the position and the authority of the Father. And this attack comes from a, a throne in very high and very dark places. Right? The great Satan himself, if I can if I can remove the authority of a father and remove that word from people's mouths, then they won't be able to speak it. And they will not be able to call upon the father because they won't be able to bring themselves to call out that name. And how do you do that? To create an environment of divorce where not only is divorce acceptable, it's celebrated. There is a career path Literally a career path in the United States called a divorce lawyer. You can become a professional divorcer in America. Now this has some very severe problems, like myself, for example. My dad split the scene when I was about 18 months old, right? Luckily, I hit the jackpot as far as single mothers goes. But, you know, there, your father is... You cannot raise a balanced individual without balance. You have to have both. You have to have the mother and you have to have the father because each one of those two representatives is going to instill something in you that you cannot get from the other person. A mother is supposed to instill cer certain things in a, into a man and the father is supposed to instill, uh, install certain things into a man. And the father cannot instill feminine qualities into me a woman has to do that. And a woman cannot instill masculine qualities into me because that's a man's job. And both are equally important. And if you take the masculine out of it, you take the identity, right? You get your identity. The thing that you get from your father is your identity. Who you are. This is who you are because this is who your father is. If you remove that, you're going to have a bunch of people walking around not knowing who they are. To such a degree that we have people walking around right now from very young age to, to very old. They're like, I don't know. I don't even know what this thing in my crotch. I don't know what this means. I don't, I don't know who I am to such a degree that I don't even know what this thing between my legs means. I don't know what it means to me. That's, that, that is a severe uh, win for the kingdom of darkness. Remove the father and you remove the identity of a people so that they don't even, they won't even know who they are. They don't know why they're significant. They don't know what, you know, what, what the meanings of words means, right? It's a demonic plan and we are seeing it playing itself out right now. And that, we have a nation of orphans now because of our divorce, our divorce culture. We now have a nation of orphans running around in there. They have anger and murder in their eyes. They hate everybody because they hate the father. They hate the father so much that they've created this, this whole new way of conceptualizing God and calling it the patriarchy. The patriarchy. You see it on their faces. If you look, you, you watch the videos for yourself. The venom that comes out of their mouths when they say that word patriarch, which literally means father. Those, those kids are under such a spell that when the time comes, right? And they're, they're 
they're on their last leg, they will not be able to call out for help to their father. Checkmate. That is check and mate for those people, right? We have to be a people, as Christian people, we have to be a people whose primary concern is the Father heart of God for ourselves. To seek the Father's heart and to seek the Father's face. Because we've been a people, particularly in in mainstream Christianity, we've become a people who have been primarily occupied with seeking the Father's hand, right? Let's get all the goodies. Our Father is the our Father is the author of the universe, so he has all the gold. I just really I really just want the gold. I just want the food and the and the companionship. Like I want all the things. I want all the I want all the goodies. We must shift our focus now and become primarily concerned about being a son, right? Sons and daughters of the living God, right? To be a to be a son, to be a daughter, and to look at our Father and to find out what He wants for us. What is His intention for us? What what is involved in receiving affection from our Father or having uh, words passed down to us from our Father? And if and if indeed there is a universal Father. Right? Because that's what we're promised in our holy text. We're promised a father-son relationship. That's what that's what that's the whole point. Fathers and sons. Right? And have we ever heard our own father call us out by our name? Right? Have we ever just spoken to him and said, I you know, I say these words, let thy will be done, but I gotta be honest with you, I don't know what your will is. Right? As a father, will you sit and explain to me and help guide me for the rest of my life on a moment-to-moment basis? Like, Will you show me what your will is for me? That I might be a son. right? And that I can look at you and call you father with a confidence like, yes, that's my father. My patriarch. Right? These, are the, these are the things that we have to correct in our own selves. So... Get out there and vote <laughs> and focus, you know, focus on the Father. And, and, you know, don't, look, cause and effect, man. What we're seeing in this crazy world is an effect of something. And to what, like, you know, there, there's other men that are, that are going to be able to explain it better than I can. Jordan B. Peterson is probably the first person I would point you to. Go talk to that guy. That guy is explaining, like, how this all happened. It was postmodernism. You know, it was it was that that sort of thinking after the Enlightenment, like like oh we're just gonna we're just gonna make it so that nothing means anything, right? We're gonna try this this level out, and for some reason that's what got taught in our universities, and now now we're paying for it, right? Now we're paying the consequence for it. And uh, my job here, like this show, what this is going to be about is just look, man, let's just look at it together, let's go through this journey together. You know, and if you hear of somebody like a Jordan B. Peterson, then like, like, bring it to the show, right? Tell your friends. Get out on social media and be like, hey, there's this other guy, right? And this guy is saying, you know, this, this, and this. Let's all, let's all talk about it. Because this time, you know, before there's massive bloodshed and, there, and it's, looking, it's looking more and more like that's what's coming. A lot of bloodshed. And we're going to have to be the ones like not, we're not, it's like it's said in you know in Christian circles, like, look, your job isn't to find out who the Antichrist is. Your job is to just not be the Antichrist. Just make sure it's not you. You know, your job isn't. To, you're, you're not an Antichrist hunter. That's that's that that is not a job that exists in the kingdom of heaven, right? Well, in society, it's like, dude, your job is not to find out who the Nazis are. Your job is to make sure that you don't become a Nazi, like these leftists. Right? These leftists who are going around clocking people in the head with bike locks and saying Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. It's like, dude, clearly you're the Nazi. You're the people who's trying to, to kill people who don't believe what you believe. You're the Nazi. Right? You are the very thing that you're claiming that you hate. 
And that's going to cause bloodshed, a lot of it, probably. So, you, you know, you and I, you and me, our job is to make sure that we don't give in to the hatred and the, and the, and the fright and the panic. We have to keep cool Christian heads on us. All right? That's the show for today. Hey, if you like the show, you can become a Patreon supporter or just send some money by PayPal. Uh, you can go on to archadvocate.com, arch-advocate.com. That is my website. And uh, it's under construction. I know that the uh, the crypto currently, uh, all that, all the graphics. And thanks again to Raleigh Felton for all that good work. Um, all that stuff is still on there. I'm going to be working on uh, putting that together. But the new show, it's the Arch Advocate Show with Pete Dobson. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for hitting share, leaving a review on iTunes. Uh, whatever, man. What, whatever you do to help... Uh, I do appreciate all that. Also, check out the, the YouTube show. Please hit subscribe to that. I'm trying to get that Google money, yo. All right. That's it for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.